Okay, I'm gonna give you seven marathon sessions detailed that you can put into your training program right now. If you're building towards an October or November, December marathon, this is perfect for you in order for you to get faster, to become a more efficient runner at working over the marathon distance specifically. Now, here's a great question that I had in the comments. This is from Matthew. How many intervals or reps would you need for the three hour marathon benchmark? For example, six times five kilometers at 417 per kilometer. What is the highest you would go or run halves or long runs or last half at marathon pace? And that was off the back of how to run five kilometers in 20 minutes. And I gave some interval sessions during that video, which I'll put in the link at the end of this video. It's funny that people think all of a sudden they're doing a different distance. So the training has to massively shift to work towards that longer distance. Five kilometers versus 42 kilometers, big difference. And therefore the, change in tra the training changes dramatically. It's just not the case. And the funny thing is, is although it's different energy systems at play when you're running on an all out 5K, we've all probably felt how that feels to go as fast as we possibly can for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 50 minutes, it doesn't matter. But going all out and trying to be on the limit is difficult to do 5K. If you've done a marathon, you'll realize that you need to hold that for longer. So endurance, stamina is more important, but to get the most out of that, which obviously Matthew is, what he's trying to do is run a sub three hour marathon. So how do we prepare him to get him ready for that day? So he's not only able to do the distance and survive the distance, but he's also able to thrive and get the very most out of his body. And if he's currently aiming for sub three, but he's thinking about intervals and he's thinking six times five kilometers sounds sensible, then maybe he can insert some of these interval sessions in order to get the very best out of his body on race day and run way quicker than sub three. The big difference for me, 5K training and marathon training, is we wanna be doing more volume, gradually get into doing more volume at the pace that we're trying to run on race day for the marathon and faster. And so we're gonna be working a lot more with our lactate threshold and sub-lactate threshold sessions in order to make us more efficient at moving over the ground for longer periods. For a 5K, we'd work with probably a volume of between 5,000 meters and 8,000 meters in a typical session. 8,000 meters really at the top end. For a marathon session, we want to get towards, maybe you're starting at five or 6,000 meters, but we want to get towards eight to 12,000 meters. And that you need to gradually move towards. And what that might look like, you're currently doing an interval session, as I often talk about 20 times one minute, 13 times 90 seconds, 10 times two minute, five times four minute, very simple interval sessions with 60 seconds rest always as your rest. So you're getting used to heart rate coming down, bringing it all under control, judging the session, pacing it really well and getting the most out of the session. For a marathon, we gradually want to increase that. So you might start working with 24 minutes worth of total volume. So that might look like something like initially eight times three minutes or three times eight minutes, six times four minutes or four times six minutes. Again, 60 seconds always is a constant for a number of reasons, but get your heart rate used to coming down, but also have that as a constant. So over the weeks, you can monitor your progress. And that's a key indicator of fitness. How quickly am I able to recover after pushing? And what you will find usually for a longer rep, like an eight minute rep, it should be easier for you to bring the heart rate down because although you've been working hard during the interval, you've not been as working as fast or as hard as you would for a one minute interval or a two minute interval. So it's actually usually quite, quite a lot easier to bring the heart rate down. For example, you might, your heart rate during a one minute interval might get up to 175, 185 beats. For an eight minute interval, you might go up to 160, 165 beats. And so getting it down to 130, 140, just as an example, will be a lot easier for you and a lot easier to manage. The difficulty in going up in the rep length is obviously gonna be that you need to pace it in a different way. There's only three reps, for example, but they're eight minutes each. So you have to pace every minute, every couple of minutes, every four minutes, every half rep, and then every rep. If you can start to get that right, you're going to accumulate volume at sublactate or lactate threshold pace depending on what that is for you. And that's very, very individual. So I'm not gonna to get too much into that. Next type of sessions I'd be doing is mile repeats and kilometer repeats. Again, I'd be working on focusing on that sort of getting to six to 8,000 meters of total volume. So that might look like six, 
times a kilometer or, or eight times a kilometer. You might want to do four or six times a mile, but you're gradually getting to that. So if you're currently at 20 minutes worth of volume, I'd progress on to 24 minutes of volume and then 30 minutes of volume. Get yourself to a point where you're able to manage comfortably 30 minutes of volume. And so that when you shift across, if you're, for example, aiming for the three, uh, three hour marathon, then that's 415 per kilometer. So your six times a kilometer might be six times marathon pace, 415. You might want to take 10% off that and do six times about 350, about 345. And so that gets you feeling comfortable at marathon pace or faster than marathon pace, so that as you gradually get a bit more on that volume, you increase the volume, you're able to hold marathon pace plus 10%, 10% quicker than marathon pace, which is gonna put you in a great place for race day and feeling confident that you can tackle and move over the body. Your body has become very well trained at moving over the body, uh, moving over the ground faster than what you have previously done for a marathon. Quite a wild thing, but not necessarily so surprising is a lot of people will go into the marathon and they haven't run faster than marathon pace. And so what they're trying to do is just survive the distance of what they're usually running at. A lot of runners, if you got a 50 minute PB for a 10K, will go out and do a lot of their runs at sort of 55 minutes for 10K. And so essentially what they're doing is doing a lot of work in the gray zone so that when they try to add structure in, they quickly realize that either they've got to bring those easier runs and recovery runs down in effort level, down in pace so that they can go hard when it really counts on the interval session and the long run. And that allows them then to go faster. And that's when you sort of get 10 to 20%, 30% gains on your 10K time because you're starting to work with structure, you're starting to put intervals into play for you, and you're starting to do the right things well. So yeah, it's working up with more, gradually more volume. The key is gradual. So if you can get to a point where my perfect sessions before a marathon, and it's, it's again, look at it like a confidence builder. It's 10 times five minutes and five times 10 minutes. If I can do 10 times five minutes and I can hit a mile for each one of those, I know that I'm in, I'm in PB shape for the marathon. If it's sort of like, hot, and this is another variant that you need to look at, it's very hot at the moment, we're in August, going into September, Berlin Marathon, October, November, December, you've got Chicago, New York, marathons around the world, Abu Dhabi included, then think about the pace that you're currently able to hold and how that would equate to on race day when it's usually optimal conditions. Like Lon at Berlin, you're probably sort of looking at between 12 and 15 degrees on the start line. At London in April, you're probably looking at 10 to 12 degrees on the start line. If you're training in hot conditions, like I've often trained in Granada, then I'll add 10% on and just know that if I can run marathon pace, sort of 10 times five minutes or five times 10 minutes at marathon pace of so 319 or 320 per kilometer, then it's going to make my race feel much easier. So there's a nice little hack there. Often you can kind of look at the data and forget to look around what is actually going on. And if you've got everything firing on all cylinders for you, so your stress is under control, your sleep is under control, your nutrition is absolutely dialed in, your diet is good, hydration is good, but it's incredibly hot, it's 40 degrees at the moment in Dubai, how difficult are those reps gonna be compared to what it's gonna be on race day? So that's the art of kind of coaching or the self-awareness that you need if you're coaching yourself in order to get those gains. So yeah, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, please put them as always in the comments below. And yeah, brilliant question.